السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي بيده مقاليد الفرج والصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي صاحب الجبين الأبلج المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بأقوى مدين وأعظم منهج وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين هم مفاتيح الرحمة ومصابيح السرج أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفقه ونفثه إن في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد My dear brothers and my dear sisters Just in the beginning I would like to mention one thing that is hardly been Today is the 25th 26th of Shawwal or something like that. It's been hardly one month since the month of Ramadan left us. Hardly one month. Almost we're coming up to one month since Ramadan has gone. And this is now a checkpoint for us. to, As a litmus test, to scale, as a scale, mizan, to see how our Ramadan was. Whether our Ramadan was one accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whether we passed by the month of Ramadan taking no benefit because one of the uh, one of the things which will tell whether your Ramadan was accepted or not is your continuity in good deeds continuing in those good deeds you started in the month of Ramadan all those good deeds that we performed in Ramadan from Qiyamul Layl, Tilawatul Quran, giving in Sadaqah, coming to the Masjid whether you continue in that, perhaps not at the same level as inside of Ramadan, but whether you continue upon that, because our life, our whole life is meant to be spent in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just for one month of the year. Hence why some of our salaf, rahmahumullah ta'ala, they used to say, بِئْسَ الْقَوْمِ لَا يَعْرِفُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا فِي رمضان. What an evil people. They only recognize Allah subhana in the month of Ramadan. Once the month of Ramadan goes past, then they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, what is wanted from us is to be regular in our good deeds, our ibadah, to be regular. And that was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was asked how was the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said that kana amalu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deematan. The actions, the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was deema. What is deema? Deema is an Arabic word referring to a constant, peaceful, calm rain. The rain is falling constantly and calmly and peacefully. This is how the action of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was they were consistent, they were regular. That is what is wanted from us. Ahabul A'mali ilallahi adwamuha wa in qalla. All of us know the hadith. The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those which are performed regularly, even if they are small, even if they are little, but they are performed regularly, they are performed consistently. Those are the deeds most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the whole point of Ramadan was what? To discipline our soul to transform our hearts, to transform our hearts from those hearts which are rebelling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a heart which is obedient to Allah the Jalali wal Ikram. That is the whole ethos behind Ramadan. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you obtain taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is taqwa? Taqwa ha huna wa ashara ila sadrihi. As they say Muslim. Taqwa is here. And he pointed to his heart, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. So a sound heart, the topic of this, uh, this reminder, short reminder about our heart being sound, our heart being rectified, being reformed. So when we look, when the first thing we must understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created everything in creation and he specified mankind. He specified me and you, walaqad karramna bani adam. We gave honor and dignity to the children of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Out of all of the creation of Allah subhanahu, he gave dignity, kar karam to us, to Banu Adam. And he created us fi ahsani taqweem, 
in the best of all statures, the best of all molds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our physique, created our body. And after having created us in the best way, the best form, then Allah subhanahu He did not leave us to wander aimlessly in this life. Rather, Allah Jalal, He sent to us prophets and messengers as guides for us, to guide us, to correct us, to rectify us and whoever it was that adopted the teachings of those prophets والسلام, in their lives, they would be the ones who are successful. This is true success to adopt the teachings of the prophets and as a result, a person who avoids the hellfire and they are admitted into paradise, such a person has succeeded. That is actual true success, not success as as we see in this life. Whoever has the most subscribers, they are successful. Whoever is the richest, they are successful. Whoever is the most, you know, they have the most beauty, they are successful. No. True success is the one who they avoid the fire and they enter into the gardens of paradise. This person, they have succeeded in the actual meaning of the word success because the true life is not this life. It's not the 60, 70, 80 years that we will live here. وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ In Surah Ghafir. The true life, actual life, is the life of the hereafter. That life in which there is no death. That life in which it is perpetual living. Either in shaqawa, na'udhu billah, in wretchedness, or in sa'ada in bliss that is the real success that is actual and haqiqi success and in the akhirah in the hereafter when our bodies have decayed our bodies have decayed in this life and will be given a new body when we are resurrected in that life of the akhirah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will not glance how we look he will not glance at our bodies rather the glance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in sahih muslim Allah subhanahu wa does not look at your bodies, at your physique. Neither does Allah subhanahu wa look at your wealth, how much money you have amassed. Rather Allah Allah Jalal, He will look towards your hearts and He will look towards your a'mal, your hearts and your actions. That is where the glance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affixed. Upon our hearts, what was the condition of our heart? And upon our a'mal, upon our good deeds. Which also is an indication in regards to when we mentioned the two uh, prerequisites, conditions of any action to be accepted. Is number one, tawheed, the aqeedah has to be correct. And number two, ittiba'u sunnah. The action has to be in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can derive that from this hadith also. Allah will look at your hearts, your aqeedah. Your aqeedah has to be correct. And your a'mal, whether they are in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If they are not, then وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا What a terrible Situation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al-Furqan that will present what they have done in terms of their deeds. All the actions that they did in this life and will render them into, act, into particles of dust, having no weight to them, having no importance, having no significance because they did not meet these two criteria. The person, their aqidah was faulty and the actions they performed were not in accordance to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at this. He looks at your hearts and He looks towards your a'mal, towards your deeds. Hence why this is the most important thing a person should work on in this life. To work on making sure their heart is one which is presentable for the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their deeds are such that they will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yawma Luqiyah, the day when it is the time for meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This gives us an idea how important it is to diagnose your heart, to check your heart, because this is where the glance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon. And likewise, this is the instrument that Allah subhanahu wa sent the Quran upon. Nazala bihir ruhul amin ala 
qalbika litakuna minal mundhirin Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam he brought down this Quran upon the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam not on any other portion of his body on his heart ala qalbika litakuna minal mundhirin and likewise this Quran it was meant for reflection it was meant to be reflected upon, to be pondered upon. Afala yatadabbaruna al-Qur'ana am ala qulubin aqfaluha. Again, Allah used the word heart. That do they not ponder over this Qur'an? Do they not open this Qur'an and reflect and think and ponder? Am ala qulubin aqfaluha. Or are their hearts chained up? Meaning that if a person does not ponder over this Qur'an, is a sign that their heart has been locked up, their heart has been chained up. Do they not ponder over this Quran? Or is it the fact that their hearts have been locked up, their hearts have been uh, chained up? So this heart is very, very important to check our hearts. And this word, qalb, heart, qalb, why is it called as qalb in the Arabic language? لماذا سمي القلب قلبا? Why is heart termed as heart? We find in the Muslim of Imam Abu Ya'la and some other books of a hadith, Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, he said that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that innama summiya al-qalbu, the heart has been termed as heart, qalb, min taqallubihi. Because it is always altering, because it is always changing, because of the way that this heart it flips and the way that this heart changes is always changing, hence why it's been termed as Qalb, because our hearts they always they change. Hence why Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna rahmahullah ta'ala he used to say that Ma alajtu shay'an ashaddu alayya min niyyati. I have never remedied, I've never treated something more difficult to treat than my intention inside of my heart. Min taqallubihi, because it is always changing. فَإِنَّهَا تَتَقَلَّبُ عَلَيَّ Because it is always changing. One, when I begin something, my heart, its condition is in one state. And then, I may see the people looking at me, I may fear fame, and my heart will change, my intention will change. And that is the most difficult thing to bring my heart back on track. مَا عَالَجْتُ شَيْنَ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ مِنْ نِيَّتِي This is the most difficult thing to keep steadfast. Hence why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his most frequent dua in his sajda would be اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O you who is the ultra of hearts, O you who is the changer of hearts, make my heart firm and steadfast upon your deen. The most frequent dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence why he also said alayhi salatu wa sallam that inna quluba bani adam bayna usbu'ayni min asabi ar-rahman yuqallibuha kayfa yasha. That the hearts are between the two fingers of ar-rahman. He changes them however he wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are located between the two fingers of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flips them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes them. In what way? As again in Sahih Muslim, that يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا أو يُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا A person may see the morning in belief and by the evening time come they have sold their faith and they see the evening as a disbeliever or they see the morning as a disbeliever and by evening time they have entered into Al-Islam the hearts are always changing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He always He changes the condition of the hearts hence why always ask for Steadfastness of your heart. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinika. So the condition of a heart is something which is, should be of paramount importance to a believer. Because a believer should not be, you know, in Arabic they say kal waraqati fil hawa. Like a leaf in the wind. A leaf in the wind. Is there, how is the condition of that leaf in the wind? There's one leaf floating in the wind. Whichever way the wind blows it, then that leaf will follow. And that is not how a believer should be. Whatever the latest trend is, whatever the latest fashion is, whatever the latest fad is, then the believer goes in that direction. No. Rather, a believer, their heart should be steadfast, should be firm, and they should stick to their usul and their qawaid, their principles and their foundations, which Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have laid out for them. Then a believer should always be steadfast upon that. Inna ladina qalu Rabbun Allah. 
ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون تتنزل عليهم الملائكة those who they believe they say our oh, Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they are steadfast upon that they are not like a leaf in the wind changing with the latest trend the latest fad and the latest fashion that comes their way rather they remain steadfast they are rooted they are rooted in the teachings of the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam their hearts so hence why a heart we should always always take a reflection take a step back and check what is the condition of our heart because hearts are of three different categories there are three different types of hearts number one a heart which is qalbun salim a pure heart a healthy heart and this is that heart which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions us the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam wala tukhzini yawma yub'athun yawma la yanfa'u malun wala banun illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim oh my lord do not disgrace me on the day la tukhzini yawma yub'athun the day when all of mankind will be brought out when all of mankind will be resurrected, Ya Allah, do not bring me disgrace and humiliation on that day. Such a day when no wealth and no offspring will bring any benefit to a person. Except for one category of people. Illa man atallaha bi qalbin The one who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is resurrected on Yawmul Qiyamah with a pure heart. With a wholesome heart. A healthy heart. This is one type of heart. A qalbun salimun. Then second is a qalbun marid a heart which has been diseased a heart which is ill a heart which is sick and na'udhu billah the third type is a qalbun mayyitun a dead heart where a person is walking on this earth they are walking and they are living and they are breathing but inside their heart is dead their heart has already died their heart is, de their heart is deceased as if they are dead, but they are living. This is a third type of heart. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. So a qalb, heart, which is salim, which is healthy, which is wholesome. What is it that entails this type of heart? A heart which is wholesome and a heart that is pure. This is entailing of such a heart, which is safe and which has been saved from two things. A heart which is been saved from two things number one shahawat and number two shubuhat if a heart is saved from these two categories of of things of these two types of diseases then that heart is a pure heart that heart is a qalb which is salim number one shahawat and number two shubuhat shahawat shahawat is a plural of shahwa desires a heart which is pure and has been saved from desires and how many they are how many they are especially living in the 21st century how many desires there are around us there's the desire of chasing after your lust and how easy that is in this 21st century there is the desire of hirs and tama of wanting leadership wanting a role wanting to be seen wanting to be heard where everybody can just take a clip and post it online and think they they are deserving to be listened to there's the disease the, the the desire for greed and for wanting more wealth wanting fame what there's so many so many desires that a person can fall prey to and that is why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he described very beautifully that the fire of Jahannam has been screened, has been cloaked with desires. Shahwat, shaitan calling, shaitan whispering, a person to come, and then a person listens to their desires and they fall into the pits of the fire of Jahannam. And Jannah and paradise has been screened, has been covered, has been cloaked with obstacles and difficulties and hardships. Because that is the whole purpose of the test of this life. He who created death and life to test you. 
Which of you is the best in their deeds? Ayyukum ahsanu amala. If there was no desires calling us, and if good deeds to a certain extent were not hard to perform, what would be the test of this life then? There would be no test. There would be no point of any test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing people. But that is the whole purpose behind our creation and our being sent upon this earth and our testing upon this earth. Good deeds which are hard to perform, like in these summer months, these summer months, Salatul Isha, very late. What time is Salatul Isha here? Half past ten, late in the night. And Salatul Fajr, very, very early in the morning. Hard to perform, hard to be regular upon. And hence why, because it is, you have to fight your desires. A person has to fight their desire of, desire of sleep. Desire of wanting to sleep on a nice, warm bed under a blanket. To come out of your bed, to perform wudu and to come to the masjid. This is a, to fight your, fighting against your desire to come to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what is intended by shahwat. A heart being pure of shahwat, of desires, and a heart being pure of shubuhat, of doubts. And again, how many there are in this age that we live in. Perhaps the most doubts a person can be prone to is in this time, is in this age. Because in the previous ages, there was no immediate means of technology. Worldwide propaganda was not a thing. People were restricted in their locality where they were. Perhaps people were born and they died in the same area that they lived. They were born in. They did not travel much. But now, global travel, global communication. One person has one shubha, one, de one, desire, one doubt, and that single doubt However flimsy it is, but it's dressed up beautifully and nicely, spread across the whole world. All seven continents, one shubha, one doubt can be spread. And what is intended from us is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Those are only and only the believers who believe in Allah and His Messenger, and then they have no doubt in that. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُ They have no raib. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ This is the Qur'an, this is that book in which there is no doubt regarding. Rather, our deen pushes us to yaqeen, to certainty and to have conviction in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the various aspects of this deen, what is wanted from us is yaqeen is certainty and not doubt. Doubt is that which when doubt is crept into the heart of a person, if it is not tackled, if it is not tackled head on, then that doubt will slowly, slowly spread like a cancer. It will spread and it will spread. One doubt will lead to another doubt and it will lead to an even, even bigger doubt. Hence why what the Prophet Sallallahu say, that when shaitan comes to one of you, and he says, Man khalaqa kada? Man khalaqa kada? Who is it created that? Who is it that created the mountains? Who is it that created the rivers? Who is it that created all of this around you? Say, Allah, Allah. And then Shaitan will keep trying to bring doubt, doubt, until he says, Wa man khalaqa Allah? And who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Doubts come one after the other, one after the other. And when he reaches this stage, then a person should say, Amantu billah. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the creator and he has no creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get rid of the doubt. Let a person remove the doubt that they have and build upon the certainty that they have. Certainty. A heart which is salim, qalbun salim, is a heart which is fighting of desires and fighting of shubuhat. Fighting of desires and fighting of doubts. And when this, once this heart is free from desires, all they see is the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have no shak, no doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that is what is called as a qalbun salim, a pure heart, a wholesome heart, a healthy heart. And that is what is wanted from us, to have our hearts which are pure, hearts which are healthy. But once a person, they fight off their desires, they fight off their doubts, and they achieve this level, which is a lifelong mission. 
It's not the fact that a person has, you know, they uh, engage in some internal struggle with, struggle with shaitan and think, now oh, I've achieved a heart, pure heart, I didn't do anything more, I've achieved a pure heart. Like <laughs> some of the Sufiya, they say that, Allah mentions in the end of uh, Surah Al-Hijr, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship Allah until certainty comes. You say, now we've reached certainty, we don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. No, certainty means death. Worship your Lord until death comes to you. All of your life, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once a person knows what is a pure heart, a wholesome heart, a healthy heart, and they work to achieve that pure heart, to cleanse their heart, then also what is wanted from them is to have a soft heart, to have a pure heart, and then to soften that heart, to ensure that that heart is not one which is hard, because that is what happened to the people of the past, the previous generations, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, in many places of the Quran, in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah mentions, فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Time passed, time passed over them, years passed, and their hearts became hardened, their hearts became hard, like a rock, like a stone, Rather, what is wanted from us is not to have a hard heart, rather to have a soft heart, a soft heart. And how to achieve your heart being uh, soft? Number one is through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma innul qulub. In the remembrance of Allah with jalali wal ikram, do hearts find peace? Do hearts find serenity? A heart softened? When they mention and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The Prophet sallallahu gave a similitude of the one who remembers their Lord and the one who does not mention Allah subhanahu is the, like the similarity of the living and the dead. One who mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers him jalla wa ala is like the one who is living and the one who never mentions Allah the Jalal, they have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the one who has died, is like the one who is dead. To mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the creator of this heart, to busy yourself, the parting advice the Prophet sallallahu gave Sayyidina Mu'ad bin Jabal radiyallahu an before he sent him off to Yemen, he mentioned to him, وَلَا يَزَالُ لِسَانُكَ رَطْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ to always keep your heart, your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those who in all circumstances, they mention Allah, they remember Allah, whether standing, whether sitting, whether lying down. Their hearts are always moist with the dhikr and the mentioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will lead to a person having a soft heart, the mentioning of Allah subhanahu, the remembrance of Allah the Jalali wal Ikram. And the second way after a heart is pure to be softened is to visit the graveyards, to visit the graveyards and to remember the reality of this life. That life is not guaranteed to us. Life is here tomorrow and life is, life is here today and life is gone tomorrow. There is no guarantee that any of us will live to even Salatul Asr. There is no guarantee. Hence why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam he took the shoulder of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma and he said, Ya Abdullah kun fi dunya ka annaka gharib aw aabiru sabeel Oh Abdullah ibn Umar, be in this life as if you are a stranger or as if you are passing through this, passing through and Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhuma, he used to advise his students that إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاعِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاعِ That if you see the evening, do not expect to see the morning. And if you see the morning, do not expect to see the evening. وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ When you are healthy, take from, make use of that health before you become sick. وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لِمَوْتِكَ And whilst you are alive, take use of that time before you, for you are no longer alive, before you have died. Visiting the graveyards 
as the Prophet Sallallahu said that Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyaratil qubur I used to forbid you from visiting the graveyard because that is the place where shirk can enter I used to forbid you from visiting the graveyards Fazuruha but now go and visit them Fa innaha tudhakkirukum bil akhira because these when you go to visit the graveyards that will remind you of the akhira as these people laying here in these graves some of them were healthy some of them were young some of them had they had hopes and they had uh, ambitions they had families all of them could not escape death fazuruha go and visit the graveyards because they will remind you of the akhira wa tuzahidukum fi dunya and they will give you detachment from this world you will realize the actual value of life that you are alive and if these people buried inside of these graves if they were given if they were given one more chance to come back to this life what would they what would they wish for what would they wish to do the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that rak'atani khafifatani two soft two quick rak'ahs two short rak'ahs are more beloved to these people buried inside of these graves mean a dunya than all of this life all of the riches of this world all of the wealth of this world all the gold and silver all the fame everything is nothing with these people compared to two quick short rak'ahs in which they would if they were given a chance to come back and offer just two short light rak'ahs they would prefer that over the whole dunya to go and to visit the graveyards this is a second means of a person softening their heart nothing softens your heart like visiting the graveyard go and visiting the disease the, the deceased among your family members of your grandparents of your aunties and your uncles those who you knew who they were living and they had life in their eyes and now they are buried deep inside of this earth buried six feet under the earth nothing compares to soften the heart of a person like this action which was the commandment of the prophet and fazuruha go and visit the graveyards we should all every single one of us if you have not visited the graveyard in some time then to rejuvenate the to give life again to your heart we should go and visit the graveyard and make dua for those who have who are buried there and remember that one day sooner or later we are going to join them inside of this grave and what will this push a person to do action that you have life now do not allow any salah to pass by do not allow the quran to build up dust without having been read do not allow monday and thursday to come by without being fasted all of these actions once a person realizes the reality of this life this will push them to perform good deeds which is the whole again point of this life to perform good deeds khalaq al mawt wal hayat li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsan wa amala to perform good deeds and in the akhirah we will be told on yawm al qiyamah tilka al jannah tilka al jannah allati urithtumuha bima kuntum ta'malun this is the paradise which with, which its width is like the heavens and the earth which you have inherited because of what you used to perform bima kuntum ta'malun because of the good deeds that you used to obviously after the mercy of Allah subhanahu because of the good deeds that you used to perform so our hearts we should try our best to doctor our hearts to perform surgery on our hearts make them hearts which are pure pure from shubuhat pure from shahwat pure from desires pure from doubts and then soften our hearts and the greatest way to do that is again the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nunazzilu min al-Qur'an ma huwa shifa'un wa rahmatun lil mu'minin we have certainly revealed this Qur'an and in it is cure in it is a remedy for all diseases of the heart and it is a mercy for those who are believers this Qur'an in hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lil lati hiya aqwam guides towards that which is the best in all aspects of the word guides to that which is the best and likewise to always beseech and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure your heart to remedy your heart to make your heart pure 
to ask Allah, beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always used to in his sajda, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala adinik, Ya musarrif al-qulub, O you who is the ultra of the heart, sarrif qalbi ila ta'atik, alter my heart, divert my heart towards your obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To always, never forget this, many times we, we overlook and we trivialize lifting our hands and beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is such a connection between the heart, between the slave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> that Allah the Jalal says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slave asks you about me, then I am near. How am I near? أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دعان. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls upon me. I respond to my caller, the one who makes dua, I respond to them in whichever way, whether I give them what they ask for now, or whether I give them something better in the future, or whether I save that dua for them on Yom Al Qiyamah, I always respond, Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. Whether it's us, mankind, that we are always mustajil, we are always uh, quick and we think Allah has not responded to me. Allah has not responded to me. No, Allah has always responds to his slaves when they call upon him. But which way has Allah responded to you? Has he given you your request? Or perhaps he has saved your request for something better in the future? Or perhaps by that dua you have called upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has diverted a calamity away from you which was due to befall you. One of these three ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always responds to the caller of the one who calls upon him. So in ending, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to purify our hearts, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to have healthy hearts, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our hearts such hearts which are pleasing for him to view subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا ما عندي والله أعلى وأعلم بصواب علم وأتم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.